Today, I want to show you three fail safe tips to finally get that ear to pop on your sourdough bread. The ear is what turns every sourdough bread from average to extraordinary. The ear pops in the oven if you do everything exactly right. And to get it is incredibly hard. It takes a lot of attempts. But with those three tips, you will definitely get that ear on your sourdough. Let me show you. Tip number one is dough strength. Dough strength is what you get by kneading your dough. You're aligning the gluten strands of your dough. That makes sure that the dough holds together nicely. When a dough holds together nicely, it can grow more in the oven. That's what gives you that oven spring. Now I see many bakers just simply using too much water for the flour. This means you'll have a much more extensible dough. The amount of water that you should be using for your flour depends on your flour. The more protein you have, the more gluten you have and gluten is responsible for absorbing all that water. Then you wanna be doing some kneading. Generally, the more water you're using, the more you should knead. If you wanna have some tips on kneading, please do check out my five tips to create incredible dough strength. Including, for instance, the autolysis technique, where you just mix flour and water and let that sit and the lamination technique, which creates superb amounts of dough strength. You could also definitely be just using a stamp mixer. That makes things a little bit easier, of course. But it's also very important that you develop this feeling for the dough. This is something that you only get by kneading with your hands. So for beginners, I would say it's even more important to use your hands to knead. What some people like to do is they like to do stretch and folds while the dough is sitting. And that also provides additional dough strength. Imagine you're making a pizza. At some point at the start, the dough is still very, very, very elastic. It stays too Together. At some point, over time, you can just nicely form a pizza. This is because your gluten relaxes. So if you don't do any stretch and folds during the course of the bulk fermentation, which is the first stage of the fermentation process, then you might want to give your dough a tighter shape or even give your dough a pre-shape. Because if you don't, your gluten might have relaxed too much. And so your gluten will be more like a pancake rather than holding its shape. And this means you won't get that ear while you're baking your dough. The second point where I see most people struggling is the fermentation. While your dough is sitting, yeast and bacteria are munching on your dough. Over time, they are converting your gluten network, which is good because this makes your dough more digestible in the end. But at the same time, over time, the strength of your gluten network also degrades. This means your dough is no longer able to hold its shape that nicely. You typically notice that and after a while, your dough is nice, but then you touch your dough and it's just such a sticky mess. That's over fermentation. At the same time, your gluten network also naturally degrades the moment flour is in contact with water. That's because there is an enzyme inside of your flour called protease. That protease converts the storage protein to something the germ can use. And those reactions are starting since you added water to your flour. So if you want to have that oven spring, you really need to make sure that you ferment exactly on point. To ferment on point, I always like to extract a small piece of the dough. We're going to be extracting a small sample from our main dough. Depending on the size increase, we know that our dough is done with the fermentation. It's much easier to see this on this tiny jar rather than the big dough in a large container. Then we mark it with a rubber band or with a pan. And the moment this has reached a certain size limit, we know exactly that our fermentation is done. It's so easy. For yeast-based doughs, you should aim for doubling in size. For sourdough though, haha, <laughs> it's slightly different. The size increase depends on the protein that you have inside of your flour. 80% of that is gluten for wheat. The more you have, the longer you can ferment your dough and thus the more you can inflate your dough. You'll have a fluffier bread in the end. So to make life a little bit easier, I prepared this small table for you. Just double check your flour's protein percentage and then you know for how much of a size increase you should aim. The second option that I like to use is a pH meter. With a pH meter, you can measure the amount of acidity your dough has and that matches with the progress of the fermentation. It really makes it very easy to always nail this first stage of the fermentation, the bulk fermentation. Downside of this method is the pH meter is so expensive. A good one costs around 200 US dollars. And number three is the baking setup. In one of my last videos, I showed you that when you bake too hot, it has negative impacts on the oven spring. Then in another video, I showed you if you bake too cold, this also has negative effects on the oven spring. So you really need to find a balance. What works best for a home oven is always to use a Dutch oven. The Dutch oven traps a lot of that steam, but be careful, don't heat it for too long. A good temperature to place your dough inside is at around 230 degrees Celsius. Based on my test, that seems to be the sweet spot from all the different experiments and combinations that I tried. Spray your dough with a little bit of water and or place a tiny ice cube inside. 
don't use too much ice because that's too much steam and too much steam will transfer the heat too fast to the dough as well. I tested different ways of steaming using an apple and a thermometer instead of my Dutch oven. And with the ice cube, the surface of the apple heated up so much faster. This means that the surface of your dough is forming some sort of gel consistency. Forming this consistency too fast is also bad for the oven spring. But then with the steam, as we're not under pressure, we're not going above 100 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what we want because afterwards at around 150 degrees Celsius, the Maillard reaction starts to darken the crust. This gives the bread the typical color. The ice cube that you should be using is around 20 grams. Or you could simply spritz your dough with some water. That would also definitely work. If you don't have a Dutch oven, don't worry. You can definitely just be using a stone, with another tray on top. That does the same job. And of course, I also did experiment on that. There was no clear winner. Both definitely works. If you just bake regularly, then the Dutch oven might be a little bit simpler. Now, what would you say? What was your biggest tip to get that beautiful ear on your sourdough bread? Please do share it with the others in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned something new. As always, may the gluten be with you.